Hey guys, Ollie here, and today we're finishing up Rare Month, our month-long celebration of all things Rareware. We've been looking at many of the developers' games all through the month leading up to the launch of Rare Replay, so be sure to subscribe and check out all our reviews. Now, before we get too deep into this, I do want to take a moment to say that I realized there were games that I missed. Conquer and Perfect Dark, to name a few. While I had every intention of doing both games, I simply ran out of time with my production schedule, but rest assured they will get their own reviews in the somewhat near future. And in the case of Conquer, both Bad Fur Day and Live and Reloaded will have their own reviews. In the meantime, look forward to the Rare Replay review later this week. Now with that out of the way, today we're taking a look at Rare's most controversial release, and that's Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts for the Xbox 360. Released in 2008, this vehicle-based platform was the follow-up to Banjo-Tooie, but due to the drastically changed gameplay, it was met with harsh criticism from fans upon its initial release. With that in mind, is Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts true to form? Or is this Xbox 360 outing throwing a wrench in the formula? Let's find out. <laughs> Nuts and Bolts begins eight years after the end of Banjo-Tooie, and after a quick recap we find our heroes enjoying their success a little too much. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nemesis Gruntilda has hopped her way back from the Isle of Hags and is ready to throw down with the blubbery duo. Just as things are about to get underway, a new character, the self-proclaimed Lord of Games, or Log, steps in and sets the duel up proper with the usual rare collectathon. After a few seconds of this, he essentially declares the genre dead, zaps everyone back into fighting shape, and sends you off to the new hub world called Showdown Town. It's here that you set off to the various game worlds to defeat the old hag once more and win back the deed to Spiral Mountain. This is a much more involved story than either of the previous two efforts and is good setup for the proceedings. All the characters still talk in text and mumbles and usually have interesting, often funny things to say. In short, the typical banjo wit is alive and well here and will surely delight new and old fans alike. From a gameplay perspective, Nuts and Bolts is a very different beast when compared to its predecessors. Scrapped are the Talent Trot, Wing Flaps, and various roles. In is a breath of vehicle parts, the only limits of which are a substantial grid in your own imagination. You'll use these vehicles to complete all manner of challenges and not just races, mind you. You'll play soccer, collect coconuts, stop grunt bots, and even fight a few bosses. Though, in truth, they're pretty easy. <laughs> what makes these objectives fun is that you really can complete them any way you want. So, yeah, use an airplane in a mainly water-based race. Take out Grunty with a mechanical boot. The choice is yours. Aside from this drastic change in approach, the rest of the game is incredibly true to form for Banjo. You still collect jiggies to open worlds, though the notes this time around are more of a currency used for buying blueprints and all manner of vehicle parts. In Showdown Town, you'll be searching for secrets, finding vehicle parts, getting black market jiggies from Jolly, and even playing a Klungo-themed arcade game. All well in a much more platforming-centric style aided by Kazooie's magic wrench. So to sum it up, don't dismiss Nuts and Bolts simply because it's different from the last two Banjo games. Give the title its fair shot and you're almost certainly going to find something you like. And hey, if you've been collecting certain eggs and keys of various colors and materials for several years, they'll have some use here. I guarantee it. Let's get down to it. Even seven years after its release, Nuts and Bolts is drop dead gorgeous. Everything from the patchwork nature of the levels to the animation, the glow of the water as Banjo swims below the surface, this game looks absolutely incredible. This is complemented by one of Grant Kirkhope's best scores, with great new tracks like the Showdown Town theme and many homages to the earlier titles in the series. I remember my first time taking in Banjo Land in all its glory. Truly this was a sight to behold, and for any Banjo fan this will be a watershed moment. Of course, this is not to say the presentation doesn't occasionally show some flaws in the patchwork. There is slowdown, most notably around the central hub area. But, by and large, the game's presentation is remarkable, and shows Rare at its absolute best. 
despite not exactly being true to the previous titles, Nuts and Bolts is a great game in its own right. This is a title that's brimming with possibilities and begging to be explored. A true hidden gem in every sense of the word that I would recommend to anyone who's looking for something a little bit different or who loves the Banjo series. This is a must buy. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts gets a 4.5 out of 5.